Well, I'm uh, going to go ahead and uh, get started here. Um, I just hit record so that uh, this will be available for whoever wasn't able to make it today. Um, but I just wanted to welcome everyone to our webinar on how to create, plan, and host memorable virtual experiences. Uh, you might not see my face in uh, our beautiful list of panelists over there, uh, but my name is Alexis Miller uh, from HMI Performance Incentives, and I'm going to uh, just be moderating today. So you will likely hear my voice occasionally uh, throughout the conversation. Um, but I just wanted to let you all know that if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to submit them in the Q&A that you'll find at the bottom of your Zoom. Uh, or if you're more comfortable uh, just sharing anything via the chat, uh, we'll be responding to things uh, throughout the webinar today. So uh, if anything comes to mind, please feel free to share. I'm just going to uh, start off by uh, introducing uh, our four panelists today. Um, so sorry, bear with me here. I'm just needing to transition over to my PowerPoint. But uh, for our four speakers, I'm going to start off uh, with Chad Brodsky. He is the founder and CEO of City Brew Tours. Uh, for those of you who don't know, City Brew Tours is the leading curator of in-person and virtual craft beer experiences across North America. City Brew Tours events combine humor, history, uh, edutainment, and unparalleled customer service and convenience. With uh, tour operations in 12 cities and distribution centers on the East and West Coast, Chad and his team uh, serve groups of all shapes, sizes, and geography. Chad is a certified Cicerone and lives in Boston with his wife, daughter, and dog, Oliver. Um, we also have uh, Todd Summers joining us today, who is uh, the sales manager at City Brew Tours. Uh, Todd has a background in academic psychology, and his mission is to provide the most value to customers uh, with an unforgettable event. Uh, he's an alumni of the University of Vermont. Todd love, uh, Todd's love for the beer industry started uh, during the craft beer boom that uh, took over Burlington during his college years. Uh, and Todd lives in Shelburne, Vermont with his fiance and his dog. We also have Agnes Fotino joining us uh, from HMI Performance Incentives. Uh, Agnes is the uh, Director of Sales Operations at HMI, where she leads demand generation efforts, as well as developing incentive strategies for clients across a myriad of industries. Agnes was the 2019 Global Incentive Awards highly recommended young gun for incentive leaders under 30 and has been a contributor to HMI's Six Circle of Excellence Awards. She resides on uh, the South Shore of Massachusetts uh, with her fiance. And then lastly, we have Lincoln Smith. Uh, for over 25 years, Lincoln has been uh, a recognized leader in the incentive marketing industry. He works with companies in over 30 industries to design uh, strategies to accelerate growth and increase customer engagement. His leadership and approach has led HMI to win six Incentive Marketing Association Circle of Excellence Awards in unique categories in the last four years for manufacturer, distributor, and service provider clients. Prior to joining HMI, Lincoln worked as a strategist for agency.com, helping organizations transition to digital business models. Uh, Lincoln is also a current board member of the Incentive Marketing Association Incentive and Engagement Solutions Providers, where he is a regular contributor and thought leader. Um, to start with, I would love to uh, just have you, Chad, talk a little bit about uh, the background and, and history of City Brew Tours and uh, your newest brand, Unboxed. Sure. Well, thank you, Alexis, for that awesome introduction. Hi, guys. My name's Chad. Um, so we started, I started City Brew Tours back in 2008 in Burlington, Vermont. Uh, Burlington, Vermont was a number uh, four beer city in the world at that time. So it was by per capita. So Vermont has a lot of, not many people, but it's got a lot of breweries. So uh, the company started with essentially me wearing German lederhosen going around to on uh, the streets of Burlington teaching, saying who wants to get in my van. It's obviously come a long way from, from that uh, since the streets of Burlington. We now operate in 11 cities. We offer franchising opportunities. Uh, first it was Burlington, then we've expanded to Boston and we're on, on West Coast as well as the East Coast, uh, Portland, Oregon on the West Coast and then pretty much throughout the East Coast for 
the tour side of the business. Um, one of the key components of all of our tours are creating unforgettable moments and shareable experiences, which we, um, and having that incredible craft beer love. So I had studied abroad in Vienna uh, and that's kind of where I fell in love with craft beer at the time. And that kind of gave me this idea of how to start City Brew Tours. Um, with City Brew Tours, uh, we were doing really, it was, everything was awesome as we were leading up to uh, 2020. We thought it was going to be an awesome year. Wow, was it, it was still an awesome year, but it was not the way we anticipated it to be. Um, so we saw, uh, I think it was on March 14th, our, all of our tours, we had to sh um, shut down uh, due to COVID. And we were, we didn't know what we were going to do, but we knew that we had incredible beer guides that were super knowledgeable and realized that we can take our experiences and create um, these virtual experiences and, and still create that unforgettable moment and shareable experience through that virtual experience. And so that is kind of how we came up with uh, our couple of our most popular uh, virtual experiences, which is our beer and cheese pairing experience, uh, happy hour. And then we also have a uh, private beer making experience where we teach people how to brew beer in, in 90 minutes. Awesome, thanks for sharing, Chad. Um, and before we kind of jump into the, the rest of the webinar and then to kick it off, uh, Lincoln, I just uh, wanted to know if you would uh, share a little bit about uh, HMI as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thanks, Alexis. And you know, there's no later hose in, in my uh, in my <laughs> my uh, my founding uh, you know or me me and how I've become part of HMI Performance Incentives. But uh, anyhow, I, I think a lot of the listeners may know HMI, but we are uh, privately held. Uh, we're based out of Boston. Uh, we're a full service performance improvement company, and uh, we were founded as a group incentive travel organization. So that's still part of our DNA is creating in person experiences and traveling people either domestically or internationally and creating memories of a lifetime. So, um, you know, we help um, both manufacturers, wholesalers, service providers, designing programs to engage either employees or their customer channel. So uh, over the last uh, several months, we've uh, also been uh, fortunate enough to be hosting and uh, executing uh, virtual experiences for, you know, our own company as well as our clients. So, uh, you know, it's been great to meet uh, Chad and Todd and uh, partner up with them. And just, we wanted to just kind of share some of our synergies and some of our experiences with the listeners today. Awesome. Thanks, Lincoln. Uh, so as we all know, conversations are definitely more fun over beer. Uh, so I thought we could kick uh, today off with a little bit of education. Um, it's in part what we found to make our virtual experiences so memorable uh, and special in working with City Brew Tours. So uh, Chad, if you'd like to start uh, with the perfect pour today, I think that'd be a great place to start. I guess I guess you can force me to drink beer at 3.15 in the afternoon on a Thursday. I mean, <laughs> fine. So if anyone at home, at home, I encourage you all to get a beer because we're all drinking. So you might as well join the party. But uh, this is one of the uh, things that we kind of start our tours, our, our virtual events off with is that perfect pour. So in order to do a perfect pour, you're gonna take your glass, this glass you can actually see is pretty cool. It has all of the chemicals and pretty, uh, I didn't feel like my glass game was that uh, that great before uh, about a couple months ago. So for the holidays, that was like what I asked for. I just wanted only glassware. So we're gonna take our glass and we're gonna uh, tilt it on a 45 degree angle. We're gonna take our beer and we're gonna slowly pour along the sides of the glass. As you're pouring along the sides of the glass, you're gonna to wanna to slowly tilt that glass up, right? Because that's gonna agitate the beer a little bit, but it's not gonna be overly foaming. So then as you're pouring, you're gonna to try to pour straight down the middle of the glass. That's gonna really agitate with those carbonation bubbles come up. You can even shake your hand a little bit to get a little bit more agitation there. And there you go, I'm gonna get a little bit. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go big, it's just big, go big or go home. And there you go, you got your perfect pour right there. So cheers, everyone. Cheers. Thanks for Thanks having for, us. Uh, sharing that. And you should always be drinking your beer out of glassware because if you're drinking out of a can, only it's only touching your nose and 
and 60% of what we perceive as taste is actually smell. So at home, drink your beer out of a glass. <laughs> well, while we're having that first sip, Alexis, do you want to go ahead and launch our first poll? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm just going to uh, go ahead and launch this here for everyone um, watching. It should pop up on your screen here. Uh, I'm going to give everyone about 30 seconds to uh, answer before I end it. Um, but the poll is obviously just uh, about planning or running a virtual event in 2021. While, uh, while everyone's doing the, 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 uh, the poll there, I just wanted to kind of, uh, you know, highlight, I think that, you know, that perfect pour has been such a great mm -hmm. icebreaker uh, for us. So, uh, you know, when we were kind of talking about this uh, webinar, we felt like this was a great icebreaker just to kind of get us going. And then, uh, you know, we found that those are really great icebreakers in the beginning of these virtual events. So, um, anyhow, it gives everyone a, a moment to kind of pause. And a lot of times we start to do introductions and have little sidebar conversations and uh, starts everyone off on the right foot. So um, anyhow, those are a, a great tactic that uh, Todd and Chad have uh, kind of implemented and we've kind of taken, taken to it quite a bit. Awesome. Thanks, Lincoln. Yeah, great framing. Uh, I am gonna go ahead and uh, just end the poll now, um, but we did have 57% uh, are saying that they are going to run one in 2021 or are planning to. Uh, one person has already done one. Uh, two of them have them in the works and then three are maybes. Uh, I'm happy to say that uh, there is nobody that said it's not in the plans. And so uh, that is excellent. Um, and uh, to, to start it off, I guess, I, I just kind of curious, um, how do you go about starting to plan a virtual experiential event? Where, where do you even start? Um, and Agnes, uh, where you have kind of taken the lead on uh, finding City Brew and, and getting that started, it'd be great uh, if you could answer that. Yeah, and I guess to give a bit of background for the listeners and viewers today, uh, as Lincoln mentioned, you know, City Brew Tours has been our partner on, I believe now five or six of the events that we've run for our channel and sales team. And through the process, we just kept getting inundated with questions of how are you guys going about this? How did you find them? You know, how are you marketing, communicating? And we felt like we were getting, you know, such a level and volume of questions that we might as well put this webinar today and hopefully answer some of those and create a little bit more education out in the marketplace and for folks tuning in today. Um, but from beginning planning, really what I looked at is what is the demographic of the audience? So are you looking at you know, C-suite? Are you looking at sales folks? Um, are you looking at internal folks, external? And then from that, where do they live? How old are they? What are they interested in? And where we started was actually being able to poll people. So you know, what are you gonna be interested in? What do you wanna learn about? Um, and then we were able to kind of pull on that a little bit to develop the framework of what our events were going to look like. Todd, did you want to chime in there? Yeah, I think, you know, from a sales perspective, something to always think about is like, what problem are you looking to solve? Mm -hmm. And, you know, for us, when we were thinking about this product in, in particular, it was people are now not in offices. They have to look at creating events that they've probably never done before and how can we make that as insightful and impressive as possible and fill that gap for them and make it fun and exciting and so we see a lot of people ask, addressing the same questions we have people spread out all over the place we have never done this before we have, don't know where to start and so we're able to lend our expertise in that space yeah where we started was almost a year ago today, Lincoln, if you remember, we, we were doing in-person events, small groups. We were actually slated to head to Anaheim to go to a Ducks Bruins game. Um, and suddenly the event was canceled and we kind of had to pivot and think, man, how are we going to pull this off? How are we going to create that memory value, those, those great experiences in this new remote world. And that caused Lincoln and I and other internal team members at HMI to start kind of looking out in the market to figure out who is there to help us pull this thing off. Um, and luckily we, we kind of bopped into you guys right in our backyard 
um, after a bit of trial and error, but you know, maybe that's a good jump off point too. You know, how are you guys finding that people are finding you? You know, what is what is the process of that vendor selection look like? Uh, for us, it's really what, how they're finding us is they're looking for virtual team building. That's a big kind of core component. How can we engage, whether it's our um, customer appreciation, but how do we engage our clients in a virtual setting? But also one of the things I like to call our products are like they're analog and digital. So they're analog in the sense that they're, you get something tangible. Um, you're not just on a, a trivia, like a, a, a bar trivia or like a magic show or something like that. You have something in your hand tangible, whether that's a home brewing kit, whether that's like a beer and cheese pairing tasting box, there's something analog. And then you also have that virtual component as well. And that's what kind of clients are looking for is that how can we create that unique engagement because we've we've already done happy hour that someone led like Joe Joe from HR led it it, it was rough like we, we people were really <laughs> trying to like ask like questions like okay who wants to show pictures of their pets right now um, you can only do that so many times and so I, we kind of came into this was like how create this analog and digital experience mm -hmm. and, and in a, a cohesive way. And so people were finding us through that kind of virtual team building, as well as our customers from our tours. We did a lot of corporate business prior to COVID starting. So that, so we were able to reach out to those um, people that already, the customers that were already looking for that kind of that unique way, um, experience to engage their customers or their, their team. And, and a brewery tour is definitely not not your ordinary outing it's not your go-to uh it's not your like we're going to take everyone out to dinner it was something unique so those people were already kind of thinking out of the box and that's again kind of where that unboxed experiences brand um came from and yeah, i think i love it yeah go ahead todd i was just gonna say i think another thing that was really helpful for us since it was new for everyone word of mouth really helped at the beginning because to sort of Agnes's point earlier, it's like, how are we going to do this? Our events canceled. And so you asked your network, what have you done? And we were able to create a new product really quickly that we thought was really good. And so then from there, sort of word spread. And that's been really, really helpful. Plus all that. Pretty stuff. sure we got a bunch of people like finding us. I think HMI had definitely a part in, in getting us some customers too. Like, I know a lot of people that reached out to us like, oh, we did one with HMI. So thank you yeah. for that. <laughs> and, you know, on that, you know, we went through our own trial and error. I mean, to, to tout City Brew Tours a little bit, there are very few vendors that we found that could do the end to end that we needed from a process standpoint. So we were looking for a vendor who could not only help us think through the agenda, but also, you know, do the shipping of boxes. Um, Alexis and I didn't want to be in a back room somewhere kind of, you know, pulling everything together, nor I'm sure do any of the listeners want their team members uh, having to try and do that, which I'm sure some have, and it's, it's a lot of work. But then the other thing that you guys bring to the table is having that third party guide who can kind of jump in, match tone, match emotion, you know, really be that kind of engagement X factor um, was really what we were looking for. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, uh, for the listeners, I wanted to just kind of highlight one of the things that, uh, that Chad said, though, I do think it's really important when you start to look at who your partner is and what kind of experience you want to offer your audience, though, is the key of the, the hybrid of it being something that's experiential, that's going to fit that demographic, that they're going to be excited, engaged, and be able to talk to their spouse or their friends or other colleagues about, but the analog portion of it, I like the, you know, that particular term, but, you know, the packaging uh, leading up to the event and the packaging of the event, not the event, but the experience that they're going to be having virtually, uh, having something that's in home. And, you know, there are ways that you can do that where it can be, uh, you know, super professional and people feel like the things that they've received are in fact, have a really good quality uh, to them. So, um, you know, that's something that shouldn't be overlooked is the, um, you know, what that design is, what the packaging is, what the inclusions are. And, um, you know, some of the stuff that we've been doing 
uh, of course, with uh, City Brew, with uh, the beers and the, and the cheese, the, the meat. But then we've also been including uh, some branded items that have a long staying power. So mm -hmm. either it be, you know, um, you know, a cheese board or anything that might be branded, such as uh, pint glasses that they could kind of share and, and keep beyond the event itself, I think, you know, has a long residual uh, benefit associated with it. So, you know, packaging and the analog piece is a real, uh, real important component. I agree. We've even seen people in working with you, Todd and Chad, is them. Um, you know, people doing those branded socks. So again, knowing their demographic, it, this particular audience, I believe, was all kind of C-suite. So they did, you know, dress socks branded um, that went in the box. But to Lincoln's point, those things that are unique and different and, you know, go above and beyond the typical Zoom webinar, as you said, Chad, you know, Joe from HR, you know, stop hosting immediately, please. We're all, <laughs> I beg of you, we're all so burnt out of those. And I, I think especially now, you know, almost a year into COVID, I don't know about you all, but how many, you know, between work and friend happy hours can one person attend? I mean, it just got to the point where it was, you know, one more Zoom meeting. So this is a great way to kind of break it up and really create an event that people don't walk away going, oh, that was, you know, just another Zoom experience. It was, oh, that was a great experience, period, regardless of what form or where it took, uh, where it took place. Mm -hmm. And I think part of like, just to kind of add to that point is when you're watching something on Zoom, that's one thing, but when you're trying that experience by yourself too, at the same time, so like during our, how we kind of structure our experiences is like, we're going to do a, let's say this beer and cheese component of it. We're going to tell you a little bit, but then we're going to kind of have you explore that part of that beer and cheese pairing to get your intake because it, it's that it's not just all pushing information out it's that given receiving of measuring the tone and who who else is is part of that because there's going to be characters and we're able to kind of take those like we would on a tour and and play off that so there's like this long stand running joke within the office about something happening we can take that information and kind of like mention that as part of the kind of experience to make it also that that really that custom feel that's not just watching the same thing over again mm -hmm. right and yeah people will ask us do you have a script like can you provide us a script before your event and the answer is like I don't think you want us to provide you with a script, right? Because you're gonna feel that immediately. And part of our, where we've always historically hired is we look for teachers, we look for comedians, we look for people who love beer. And the, the sort of the roll up of those three are people who really are able to keep their pulse on the event, see what's going on, they're perceptive and they're quick, you know? It, you, you don't want someone who you can tell is reading, you know? You, the, the owner operator to Chad would be a great events guide and he's done a few, but like there are people who are really, really going to elevate. I couldn't do it. I don't have that, like what you really need. Mm -hmm. So finding the right people to lead the events makes such a difference, you know, and we have a, we put a lot of time and effort into those people and really makes the difference, I think. Yeah. And I want to jump on that too, just real quick. And, uh, you know, um, we kind of, we had some topics we wanted to cover here. So if I'm going out of uh, out of order here, we just got to go. But um, anyway, I do think that that's really important is being able to not have a script. You have kind of a plan on the front end of these events. And I think that if you're the one hosting it, then you should certainly have, you know, who your demographic is, what are the goals that you want to achieve within that time period. And uh, then of course, whoever you do have for your guide or your partner, being able to read that room and kind of react and make sure that the audience is getting the most out of it. And, you know, we've run, you know, now a dozen different uh, events like this and they all look different. You know, it's so funny mm -hmm. to see how people's reactions are and what the mix of the audience is, uh, you know, how your guide or whoever your other host might be, how they interact. And um, they're all so unique, but at the end of the day, they can all be equally successful. But the, uh, the idea here is to have the right people and make sure that you have the right plan on what you want to get out of it. And then being willing to kind of uh, pivot and read your room, what read your room really well. So um, any other getting the right people and the right partner uh, to lead it is, uh, is absolutely uh, paramount to a successful event. 
I agree. And I would add the other thing is I think um, for the folks looking to host, don't try and take it all on yourself. I think if you can have a small group of internal folks, you know, not running point, but just there to support you. Um, I'll give you an example, you know, some of Lincoln, Alexis and I most successful events have been where we're having maybe a team's sidebar and kind of go totally off script two minutes before, you know, we thought that something else was going to happen. A, a most recent example was we discovered, you know, how powerful the Zoom breakout room feature can be. And for anyone looking to host a fairly large event in 2021, if you're not familiar with that technology or that ability, I would look into it. Uh, I think some of our most successful components have been when we've either broken up people who wouldn't necessarily get uh, the opportunity to kind of rub elbows and pair them together in a room for 15 minutes. People right now are so thirsty for meeting new people and just, you know, connecting with new faces when you've been in the same, you know, 12 walls for a year. Uh, the power of that is, is really beyond right now. Right. And I'll, I'll let um, uh, Chad and Todd uh, comment on that. But I do think it's, it's, it's important because people that are the guests in these events, my experience has been, of course, they're, they're, it's their time. Uh, they want the experience to be worth their time. And uh, a lot of times they do want to have a voice and they do want to be able to kind of share their thoughts or ideas. So if you have a too large of a group, it doesn't allow that very often or very uh, effectively. So the, the, the breakouts certainly do allow that. On the flip side, though, we've also seen where uh, if all of a sudden you give too much time <laughs> to the guests, then you haven't really kind of you know, left enough time for the experience for the group. So, you know, it really is this happy medium of trying to figure out how do I pull in my guests to be part of the experience in an appropriate way. And, um, you know, again, that's kind of where this balance is. And I, I've been in these meetings before where uh, all of a sudden 50% of your allocated time has gone by and we haven't gotten through all the introductions yet. And uh, so, you know, therefore, you know, um, you know, the overarching experience itself has been shortchanged. So you got to be careful. Yeah, we, we always recommend in the, is like bookending sort of work and play. So, you know, you do your introduction at the beginning. Hi, this is Joe from HR. Happy to have everyone at the year end celebration. Um, here are five things we did really well this year. Then sort of the fun part of the event. And then at the end, we're going to stay on for the next half an hour to sort of mingle and finish our beer and cheese, as opposed to here's the first thing we did really well. Here's seven minutes of beer. Now back to the second thing, because it's going to, people are going to start and stop like they're sort of the, what Chad's line is um, that he's not the lifeguard of your fun pool, right? It's, you know, you want to kind of let them have the, have the event for the event time and then sort of fit the work in on both sides, which I think has gotten, been really, really successful. We've gotten really mm. positive feedback from, from customers who've done that. Totally. And that's what the fruit, the, you know, that perfect pour is that icebreaker, you know, and uh, it, it uh, allows you to kind of do a welcome, do the perfect pour, everyone have a beer, get into the business side of it or the networking side. And then, uh, you, then you can kind of come back to the, uh, the, the experience. In this case, it might be a uh, beer and uh, cheese tasting. So I do think, you know, having it kind of broken up like that has been, um, you know, super, super effective. When, I, whenever, uh, sorry, whenever a person, whenever we get a, uh, an incoming lead about what they're looking to do something, goal is again, so important because even if the group is a 300 person group, like we can still create a very compelling experience with a 300 person group because we've figured out ways to still pull the group without even them like putting a poll in, but like maybe everyone's who's cheersing if they've done this or something like that, where people are still doing that engagement acti activity. So like it really it's all about what are your goals for the event and really understanding that component and then conveying that to whatever vendor you're talking to, because it's one thing to know your goals, but to accurately convey them to the vendors like, hey, we're trying to sell more uh, we're trying to sell more of our product in this goal, or we're trying to build like, our C-suite hate each other. They just despise each other and we need them to, to be friends. So that's the goal. Okay, great. We're going to, so, so we can then take that and then, and, and give that recommendation of, Hey, you don't want a beer and cheese. You want to do 
you want to make beer together first of all that's going to be way more team bonding and bringing so like understanding because you might come into it like we have people like hey hey we want to we want a home brewer we want a beer and cheese and, and we're we actually have to kind of push them to a different direction because that's not going to hit the goal of what they want for that experience whether it's the audience of like what uh, agnes said mm -hmm. of who's participating if it's at sea level mm -hmm. or if that's just this um potential customer that you're looking to acquire um but it's also that side of things it's not even just the demographics but what's the purpose of the event itself totally totally i know alexis you had a few things you wanted to pop in on yeah, I had a uh, I had a question pop in um, when it's a, a client facing event. How do you make sure that your marketing and your communications before the event are standing out, especially where so much is virtual now? I love that. Uh, I can speak to that a little bit. And I, I think uh, different uh, tactics. So I think really mixing up. So in in our examples, we've done. SMS, email, and an in-person or a physical mailer just to try and really cut through the noise. So I like to say, you know, something on your phone, something on your fridge, so something in the mail, and then something in your email. Um, and those three different kind of tactics will go a long way. And I would also say, look at the, the overall drip campaign and make sure that you're really ramping up as it gets closer to the event. Um, my last tip on that would be, you know, if there are ways to kind of encourage the, you know, education or really like the memory value that the person's going to get out of the experience, you know, make sure to market that to them. Um, a quick example on that is we did a great Oktoberfest uh, themed event with City Brew Tours and every touch leading up to the event we focus on a different fact about Oktoberfest, uh, the German Oktoberfest. So um, back to the later hose and kind of, you know, giving all of those background tips. And that really made our mark marketing communication stand out and kind of elevate the overall event. Yeah, and on that, I do think that the two things I wanna highlight there that mm -hmm. Agnes mentioned is, is one, having a great theme is really important. So come up with a brand, have some fun with it. So it's just not, hey, this is a virtual event on, you know, February 18th, you know, uh, have some fun with it, you know, have, uh, you know, a brand or an identity that you can kind of really market and promote and have, um, have that throughout the, uh, the marketing experience. So I think that's really important. And then uh, the other piece is that you can't over communicate this. I mean, when I say that, you know, um, you're, you're investing in an experience, they're an important customer or audience member of yours, and you want to get the most out of it. So uh, you'd be doing yourself a real disservice by sending one email and a save the date and not having all those other touch points that come up to the event itself. And that's part of the whole experience. So um, I think a lot of organizations short sell that. And I just wanted to highlight the theming and all of those touch points that Agnes mentioned are, are critical to the return that you're going to get out of it. Looks like we just got a audience question. Todd or Chad, perhaps you guys could answer this. Caitlin has written us and asked uh, if we could uh, touch on different types of experiences for different types of audiences. She'd love a few ideas. Yeah, I think ultimately it's gonna go back to the goal, right? So I think if you're looking to build your book of business and you're talking to new prospects, I think the interaction is going to be key. The more you can get each other talking and in short, in sort of a moderated, short, quippy way is going to help you start that kind of like top of funnel relationship if they're relatively new to you. Beer and cheese is great for those type of things because the interaction is short and quick. Like I'm using our events as um, sort of a, um, a jumping off point for Chad's example, if you have a team that's worked together for a very long time and they need to break the monotony of their day, if that's the goal is I need them to do something for two hours that isn't talk on Teams and Slack and do their job, then a more hands-on experience that's going to keep them like break up their conversation like a beer making class or any sort of class like that is going to be really impactful because it's going to be something it's like a taking a right turn in their day as they're going to make something together um if you have a giant event if you have 
hundreds of people, if you have 500, 700 people and you need an hour of content, then something where they, maybe they're watching it and you provide the sort of analog, like popcorn experience. You know, we have we, what we call the nationwide brewery tour where we showcase different breweries and people watch it and, they, and you can send them something to do. So the goals of those experiences are completely different. If you just need to entertain, if you need quick interaction or if you need people who know each other really well. And I think that's the sort of where you want to think about from a goal perspective is like the, the person to person um, relationship and interaction, what that goal is, I think. Would right. Help. I think I, one other quick uh, thing, and I know uh, Chad uh, mentioned this before, but also the events uh, to piggyback on what you said, Todd, is that sometimes it's just for that one individual and other times it might be for, you know, the spouse to interact and be part of the overarching experience. And it, there's uh, also other events that you I can actually even bring in maybe, uh, you know, family members to be part of that. I'm not suggesting that that's appropriate for, you know, um, you know, a, you know, a B2B business development, uh, you know, type of an event, but those could be events that would have value to extending uh, the audience members, uh, you know, beyond that one individual. So uh, that's other things to kind of think about. I know we've done stuff where you've done uh, either uh, whiskey or, or beer or wine and having a spouse also participate could have a lot of value where the spouse isn't uh, included in a lot of those types of events. And, you know, by bringing them in, it might make them uh, feel more vested in the brand or the, the culture or the organization in some fashion. So just wanted to mention that as well. With going on on that with Lincoln, we just really, we're about to release our ice cream float experience, which allows you to make ice cream at home and, and, and make a, a, a float uh, with that. So like, given that with the with COVID happening, people's worlds are turned upside down. So being able to kind of recognize and empathize with that to give them something like, they probably might not want, maybe don't want to drink beer uh, at four o'clock in the, in the afternoon for like a happy hour or six or seven o'clock, but maybe they're watching their kids and they're looking for something to do that you probably wouldn't have got them, but they're already watching their kids, but now they can kind of add a work-related component to that. So that's kind of that empath empathizing with whoever that customer is or whoever the client is that that participant, I think is also really important is like kind of put yourself in their shoes and see what what would they, what would kind of make them the most excited about whatever the type of experience, whether it's a magician or it's a um, ice cream float making experience or a home brewing experience. Mm -hmm. Anyone who yeah. can provide any form of unique experience right now to individuals and families will be such a rock star. I mean, I, you can't even get your hands on board games right now to play, you know, with your family. So just any form of unique experience to the listeners will go a long way. And if you can be responsible for that new memory created as, as I said, either an individual or to a couple or to a family, you're going to get long-term residual on that event. Yep. Yeah. And I think also maybe consistency too. If this is like you guys mentioned, you did five events with us, kind of how having that kind of touch point of this, something that they can, they had such a great time last month or two months ago, do it again, but do a different spin on it or do some, a different type of event. So like for, that's why we, kind of created our seasonal boxes so it's that core beer and cheese box that everyone loves but we have just our spring fling where we have added um uh fruited syrups and berliner weiss and a pot uh, a flower planting experience and whatnot so it's like adds different experiences and components to that whatever they kind of really felt connected to right <clears throat> i agree one other uh, thing for the, the listeners too, is we've been talking about, you know, the hosting of an event, the marketing of the event, uh, the experience of the event, the flow, all, all of those things. Uh, another thing to consider or think about is, you know, um, you know, if there is kind of, I, I call it a celebrity, but if there is someone, you know, bringing in outside talent to be part of that can also be a huge draw. You know, I know uh, Chad used uh, an example of like a musician, but, you know, if it was a famous musician, then that might have a draw or that might have, might have some, uh, you know, some, uh, you know, uh, I'm getting access to something that I wouldn't normally get access to. And again, those could be either celebrities can also be part of these events and you can hire that. Uh, type of talent to be part of these programs. 
And when I say uh, celebrities, they could be talent in IT, they could be talent in entertainment, they could be uh, talent in uh, business world, whatever the case is. But uh, you know, bringing those types of individuals and giving uh, your listeners or your participants access to them uh, is also a really great tactic to, uh, to think about. And combining the two, Lincoln, is I think really, we've had a lot of, a lot of companies that have a lot of success that we've worked with where they've taken that 30 minutes to do that expert talk, whether it's IT, cybersecurity, whatever the, the expert is, but then they also now get this activity or experience on top of that. So they get, so it's not even that you're talking about yourself, it's not even, you're not even pushing your company in that sense you're more providing that industry insight with this fun experience that they then associate to your business, whether you did some branding or there's marketing on the, on the Zoom call or whatever, however you have that Absolutely. addition. Absolutely. If you're, if, Go ahead, Lincoln. No, I was gonna say, if your target audience is a bunch of CIOs uh, and that's who you're trying to do is prospect, uh, you know, then, you know, know your audience, know your budget, what's going to get them excited. And, you know, maybe bringing in uh, someone that is an expert in that space that they don't normally have access to, to learn for 30 minutes and also have an unbelievable experience beyond the business in access to that individuals, uh, you know, a one, two punch mm -hmm. that'll, uh, you know, really, uh, you know, really create results. Yeah, I was going to share the story. One of our holiday events that we did this December was for, it was a team event and their, the manager ordered a cameo of some inside joke of some famous person and played at the beginning. And the, the guide in his, in his post event feedback said that it was, that everyone was like buzzing the entire time over a 30 second clip from someone that was screen shared for the event. You know, right. it's, it's like the little things like that can, that can really pay more than dividends. Totally. And just looking at the time, I know we've only got a moment or two here left. So if anyone has any other questions that they wanted to throw in, now would be the time. And while we talk about that, the last thing I wanted to make sure we hit on was, you know, how are we seeing folks capitalize on events after they're done? There's, you know, there can be a long tail residual, I think, as we've found on hosting these sorts of events. Lincoln, did you want to comment on that? Well, I think that, you know, there's, um, you know, what we've been doing for our hosted events and, and when we put on these events for our clients is that typically there's always a postpartum, you know, uh, survey to kind of get feedback, let them know that we appreciate their participation and we want uh, to hear from them. Uh, other things that we've been able to do is actually share other, if uh, it's prospects or our clients, we've been able to kind of share uh, each other's contact information. So it allows them for their own networking and other value uh, beyond that experience that they could kind of take and, uh, and build on, uh, you know, afterwards. And, um, you know, then we also will have maybe a drip campaign that might all of a sudden, you know, have some cadence, you know, afterwards, you know, again, kind of uh, reminding them or thanking them in any fashion for their loyalty or their participation in any way. So those are a couple of them, Agnes, but you probably have a couple others, maybe. You covered mine off the top of my head, but yeah, I think surveying is amazing. Um, and that can also, you know, for folks who are looking on some more qualitative sides of things, if, you know, perhaps you've done a pilot and you're looking to prove that this is going to meet your, you know, X goals and objectives, that survey and those questions that you ask in it become, I think, the critical, um, you know, anecdotes or kind of formula to feed back to others to say, hey, you know, this is working and, and here's why and here's how. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the, the goodwill that people have after the, a really well run event mm -hmm. is super high and they're willing to do lots of things for you. When I say that, we're not doing it for any selfish reason, but there's a lot of goodwill that's associated with a really great uh, experience that you're able to execute and uh, they're willing to share and, um, you know, good things happen. Well, let's maybe a quick roundup, you know, Todd, if you had one piece of advice for those out there looking to run an event or who are going to be running an event, you know, what would, what would it be? Mm, I think the big thing is beyond finding a partner who's going to be like, you can really trust is appreciate the expert viewpoint. So it's kind of to my, to my bookending statement, you know, 
let if you're hiring a magician, let the magician do the magic and then do your stuff outside of that. And I think that's a big thing is like to trust and let let the people who know know their stuff do their thing. And I think you'll have you'll really enjoy the full experience of it that way. So of that Lincoln. Um, you know, I just think that um, don't take these things lightly. Realize that the value that you can actually extract and give your audience members and don't shortchange that. Uh, I talk to a lot of individuals that think that these things can just be done in a, in a weekend, you know, just send out the Zoom link and uh, everyone crack a beer and have some fun. You know, that's not what we're talking about. We're trying to create, um, you know, true experiences and build on that emotional loyalty that uh, your audience is um, uh, trying to build on. So don't shortchange it and, um, you know, do your planning. Chad, how about you? I think that's some really good, good advice or they were both kind of like, oh, that was great. And then, so uh, just to piggyback off what Lincoln said, just like for us um, in general, like if you're shipping anything, you have to give that time in that sense to think about shipping because especially in COVID world right now, things take a long time to get places. So just having, again, that, that foresight for planning. And then I would say <clears throat> for just a final feedback is, is I kind of reiterate what we've said, but know the goal of the event. It's just so critical. And I, that's what I instruct all my salespeople to, to do is you really need to, which we try so hard to figure out what's that pain point and what's that goal that they're trying to um, satisfy as part of the, the reasoning for doing this, whether it's an overarching program that they're putting on or it's a one-off like experience. Just know, know that and be able to relay that to the, the vendor that you're, you're working with because that will again, help develop that relationship and trust too. Good stuff. Agnes, what's yours? That's good. I'll keep it simple. Mine would be, you know, really hone in on the small details, you know, whether that's a personalized call before the event or after the event, um, you know, making, looking at dietary restrictions, if you're doing it food, you know, making sure that things have been delivered to people, just really making the experience feel one-to-one, -one. like you've created it just for them will go such a long way and make your event really stand out. Awesome. Um, as one, we... one more, tell if you invited someone to an event and you just, and you don't, and they don't know about it, make sure they know that they're particular. Because we've gotten so many emails from people being like, someone's sending us a beer and cheese box. We received the beer and cheese box and we don't, we didn't know who it was from. That definitely <laughs> inviting goes Inviting people detail. is, yeah, inviting people and making sure that they have agreed. That'll save you money on the long term ultimately by knowing to make sure that this person's participating and they're not just yeah shame on them. the right addresses <laughs> yeah shame on them because it's supposed to be a very intimate or special experience that they should feel honored to be part of rather than uh just oh by the way i, I shipped you something yeah yeah sure. alexis yeah as we uh as we wrap up here i just wanted to um just share quickly uh, contact information for uh, those who are um, speaking mm. so that you can reach out. Um, oh, apologies, it just went to my beginning slide. Um, but if you're looking to connect with us, uh, the easiest way is obviously um, to reach out to either uh, HMI if you have questions on uh, how we've run our experiences um, to uh, clients, prospects, uh, and partners, um, or if you're looking to do something uh, specifically that might be uh, something you've already uh, decided or worked on, um, please feel free to reach out to uh, Todd and uh, Chad. Um, everyone's emails are, are here below, uh, but otherwise um, you can find us all on uh, LinkedIn um, or via our company website. So uh, thank you to everyone for joining today. Uh, and if you uh, are looking to get started on planning your virtual event, I hope that today was beneficial for you. Well, one final cheers. Thanks everyone for joining. And uh, hopefully, as Alexis said, everyone has some a couple of good takeaways from this.
So with Thanks that, we will conclude and we will be posting this webinar up on our websites here shortly. Great. Thanks everyone, yeah. much appreciated. Cheers. Thanks Chad, thanks Todd, thanks Agnes, thanks Alexis. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.